in his Bible, but he has so many Bibles. <laughs> all, most of them are pure Bibles that are the church. And if uh, you don't have a pure Bible uh, in front of you, it's probably because he has it. <laughs> May I therefore give me this mountain, therefore the Lord spoke. In that day for the, in tennis, in that day where the pumpkins were there, and they, the sea, we're great and famous if so be the Lord will be with me that I shall be able to drive them out to the Lord said. Amen. 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 Lord, to thank John, I know. Thank you all for bearing with him. Bearing with him. And uh, what he read, he says, Now, therefore, give me this mountain. Wherefore the Lord spake in that day. For thou heardest in that day how the Anakims were there, and that the cities were great and fenced, if so be the Lord will be with me, then I will be able to drive them out as the Lord said. Amen. Amen. So readeth the word of God. The grass withereth and the flower fades, but this word of God shall stand forever. Amen. I want to use the subject this morning, stepping out in faith. All right. All right. Stepping out in faith. These sermons for the past few weeks have been um, about the process that God went through and is taking us through in the fulfillment of the prophecy, uh, the promise that he made in Genesis chapter 3, in the curse of the, of the serpent. When he told the serpent that the seed of the woman shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. And from that point on, the rest of the Old Testament is about the process and the journey and the pilgrimage that God takes us on as he brings into the world the seed of the woman. You heard it said that all of the Bible is about Jesus, and it is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And this part of it is about how God was bringing him into being. Yes, yes. Now, we they did not know at the time of this writing who the seed of the woman was. All right, all right. But now we in these days know that we it know. was talking. Yes, sir about Jesus Christ. Right. And he was to come into the world to do three basic things yes, sir. Yes, that sir. we have covered before. Uh -huh. Three things that he was to do was to correct the problems that occurred in the fall of man when man fell. All right. And Jesus Christ was coming to number one to repair, repair. the broken fellowship All right. that occurred when man fell All right. in the garden.
Are the beaten precipitated when Adam ate of the fruit of the tree that God forbade him not to eat of? All right. And second, he was coming to, to, let's see how we want to put it, to change right. back the relationship between God and man. Because after Adam ate of the fruit of the tree, he sinned, and all sinned in Adam. Amen. Amen. And all those who were born, they were born in the image of Adam. All right. But but Adam was created in the image of God. And the seed of the woman was coming to change that relationship back from the seed of Adam. To the seed of Christ, who right. is God. Amen, amen. Mm -hmm. All right. And the third thing he was to do was to neutralize right. uh, Satan, yeah, who was the instigator of the fall. And Satan is still doing what he can today, but he's already lost the battle because Jesus Christ has already come. He's taken from him the victory. We have the victory in Amen. Christ. Amen. So, in the process of bringing into being the seed of the woman, God started with a man, Abraham. Yeah. And he moved from the man to family, the patriarchs. Mm -hmm. And then from the patriarchs to a nation. All right. And we've been dealing with this nation that God brought into being for the purpose of bringing into the world the seed of the woman. All right. mm -hmm. And now, last week we talked about the nation crossing over All right. from the the Jordan River into the land All right. that God had prepared for them. Amen, amen. And now that they are there, the land that God had prepared for them, and he prepared them for the land by keeping them in slavery for 400 years to get them ready, get them strong enough to be able to survive in the land without succumbing to the people in the land. All right, Pastor. Amen. But we know later they did, but they didn't have to. No, no, no. They were strong enough with God's help to hold their own. Yes, sir. And God demonstrated that in many ways. Hallelujah. But in our text, one of those who came out of slavery whose name was Caleb. Yeah. 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 When they first came out, they went and got all that they needed in Mount Sinai. Yeah. The law, how to live with one another now that they were out from under the thumb of Pharaoh. They left and went toward the land and got almost there. And Moses sent some spies over to spy out the land. And when they went out, he got a man from every tribe. And they went out to spy out the land. And when they came back, they made a report. And the majority report was that we cannot take this land. The, the, the people are too strong. Right. It's giants there. Matter of fact, in their eyesight, we look as grasshoppers. In our own eyesight, in comparison to them, we look like grasshoppers. All right. Come on, come on. But there were two of the twelve who brought a minority report. All right. Come on, come on. And one of them was Caleb, and one of them was Joshua. Then they said that yes, we. Can take the land. Yes, there are giants over there. Yes, the, the cities are strong and they are well fortified, but we can take the land. Yes. But the majority report won. 
And therefore they spent 40 years in the wilderness. Until all of those who were 20 years and older, those who should know better, those who should know that with God's help we can do anything, till they all died in the wilderness. But God said, I'm not going to let you go in. So now they are in the land. They have conquered not all of it, but they have conquered a great deal of it. And uh, they're getting ready now to parcel out the land to the people. To give them the land. And before they started, Caleb stood up and said, listen, I, I, I was with the group that spied out this land. 40 plus years ago. I was 40 years old then. When that happened. And now God has kept me alive all these years. All these years. All right. And now I'm 85 years old. And God made me a promise through Moses that every place where my foot sat when I spied out the land could be mine. And now I'm coming to claim what is mine. I, I, I know I'm on the council and I know that I have a choice of the land that I want because of my position of power and prestige being one of the heads of the family. But I want to choose my own, not depend on the lot right. to pick my land. This one. And the land that I want to choose is, 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 is a peculiar land for someone who has the power and influence to choose whatever they want. So I could have been like a lot. I could have looked at the land that was well watered. And chose that. All right. But I tell you what land I want. I'm, I'm a... I want to choose the mountainous land. I'm, I'm a... I want to choose the land that the giants are now occupying. I want to choose the land where the cities are well fortified. I want to choose the land that's going to be hard to conquer. Yes. Yes. I, I don't want this easy stuff. I'm, I'm... I want this mountain, the mountain that is hard to conquer, the mountain that I can't do it by myself, and I know I can't do it. My strength is too weak, but I want this challenge. My, my, my. Then I would say, why would you, Caleb? In your position, and your age now, 85 years old, want to take on such a challenge. Why? Why would you want to do that? Why don't you take some of that low land that's easy to handle, where the cities are not that well fortified, where the people are just normal people like you and I? Why would you? Choose this hard thing. What if any of you chose the hard stuff that was needed to be done? Now, Caleb was not tempting God by choosing this land. It, it, it was not like he said, some, we said, Well, I'm, I'm across this freeway, it's busy, and I know God's going to protect me. No, no, it, it wasn't tempting God like that. It wasn't typically God like said, I'm, I'm not going to take no shot, uh, no, no COVID shot. I'm going to go out and mingle like I want to mingle, and I'm going to let God take care. No, it wasn't like this tempting God. Conquering the land is what God had assigned him to do. And this was part of the assignment. 
the area where the giants. Now they drove out the giants in all the three areas, three provinces. The giants were still there in three areas in those mountains. All right. And Caleb said, that's the one I want. When the last time you chose the hard stuff that needed to be done in the project that had been assigned? Well, then you chose to do something you knew you couldn't do on your own and you're going to have to have God's help to do it. When is the last time you stepped out on faith? Hey. Oh, we, we talk about faith. We talk about God. We talk about he can do anything. With God, I can do anything. I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. We, we, we talk about that. But when was the last time you stepped out to do something you knew you could not do on your own? When you had a choice not to do it. Now, I, I know that sometimes we have to step out on faith when things are beyond our control. When we have no choice, our back's against the wall, and we have nothing to do but accept the challenge that is before us, and we do it, God will accept the fact that we accepted the challenge. But when you have a choice sure. All right. to accept it or not accept it, and you step up and say, give me this hard stuff. I remember. I hear you, Pastor. Caleb should be admired. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Being willing to yes, sir. take the hard stuff. Yes. Why would he do that? Why would Caleb want to put himself in such a position at his age and I'm, I'm, with his position of prestige in the people? As a matter of fact, he and Joshua were the only two over 20 <laughs> that made it into the land. All the rest of them died. And this is a new group who's in the land. And I believe that there are two or three reasons why Joshua said, All right. give me this tough stuff. All right. Number one, he, he wanted to be an example to the newcomers, All right. All right. to the youngsters. Yeah. He wanted to be an example. And the reason he wanted to be an example is because he has seen so much. He's seen God do so much. He was there when God sent the plagues in Egypt. He was there when the plague of flies and frogs. He was there when the plague of locusts. locusts. He was there when the hell and fire came. He was there when the plague of darkness came. He was there when the rivers and waters were turned to blood. He saw and experienced it all. He was there yeah. when they crossed the Red Sea. Yeah. He know how it felt when they were caught on the banks of the Red Sea and Pharaoh was closing in on them to die and either kill them or take them back into slavery. He know how it felt and he saw how God stood between them as a pillar of fire all night long. Yeah. He saw how God delivered them. He saw how God opened that Red Sea and how they crossed all on dry ground. He yeah. saw it. He witnessed it. He experienced it. Yes. He know how it was. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then he saw that red sea closed back in on Pharaoh's army. He saw how God took their advantage and turned it into a disadvantage. I'm, I'm, I'm. The advantage they had armor, they had shields, and they had spears, and they had chariots. They were good on dry ground. But when God turned their water loose, it couldn't work so good. And how he took that disadvantage, no weapons at all, and turned it into an advantage. They could move fast across that dry ground. God specializes in taking that which is a disadvantage to you and making it an advantage. He specializes and takes advantage that the enemy has against you and turn it into their disadvantage. Yeah. 
Caleb said, I saw that. I seen it. I witnessed it. Now, not only did he see it, and he saw what God could do, it had an effect on him. Yes, sir. You see, sometimes we see God do mighty things, and we witness it, and it does not have any effect on us at all. All right, all right. As a matter of fact, God can deliver us out of a predicament of such nature that we know it had to have been God. Yeah. And we say, oh, what a mighty God I serve. Thank you, Lord. And the soon time another problem comes, we say, oh, what am I going to do? <laughs> the fact that we witness the power of God yes, had no effect on us. But Joshua would say, I saw this. Yeah. And he said, well, you saw it. You saw how he let us across the Jordan River. You saw how he defeated Jericho without firing a shot. You saw yeah. how he delivered us out of the hands of the kings who came to take us after we got in the land. You witnessed it. Yeah. But did it have an effect on you? He said, this I witnessed and it had an effect on me. And I believe that I can do whatever it is that God has assigned to my hand to do. Because I believe God's with me. I believe that I'm walking in the will of God. You know, there is nothing can compare with the feeling of knowing that you're walking in the will of God. Come on, come on, man. It, it feels like you're levitating. It feels like nothing can happen to you. It feels like you're just gliding through life when you're walking in the will of God. There is no feeling. No, there isn't. Any greater than when you feel Hallelujah. the result of walking in the will of God. Yeah. Kids, I want this. I want to demonstrate to these young folk that having faith in God is more than just talking about it. It ought to have an impact on your behavior. It ought to cause you to do something that you know you can't do on your own. Something God has assigned your hand to do that you know you're going to need God help to do it. Yes, sir. I want to demonstrate what it means to step out on faith. He said, I know the giants are there. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I, I, I reported it. Yes, they were there. I know the cities are well defensed and fished up and walled. I know that. Yeah, but based on what I've seen, yes, sir. God do in other places. Yeah. And what I've seen God do in other circumstances. Yeah. And the impact it had on my life. I believe that if he did it then, yeah, he can do it now. God changes not. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. See, based on that, I said, give me this mountain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give it I know it's going to be hard, but I want this mountain. I want this challenge. I'm not looking for an easy way out. I've got faith in God because I've seen him do too much. Oh, come on, come on. Well, mm. and what he done is had an effect on me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I believe yeah, that God can do anything but fail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. I believe if I trust yeah. in Him yeah. and never doubt, no matter what He assigned to my hand to do, He will bring me out. Yeah. God brought me all these oh, years oh, to the wilderness, yeah. and my strength today is as strong as it was forty-five years. I'm saying since you brought me this far, no, you didn't bring me this far to leave me now. Yeah, come on, come on. So give me this mountain. For I believe. Based on what I've seen, yes, yes. and the effect it's had on me, it's changing. that I'll be able to drive them out. No, as the Lord said. Yes, yes. And Joshua, who was his buddy when they spotted out the first time, yeah. 
Say that you're my man. Yeah. I'm granting your request. Yeah. And Joshua gave to Caleb yeah. the mountain area that he requested. Yes, Stepping out on faith. Come on. You don't know how you're going to come out. But you know who's in there with you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And if you said, we're going to drive them out, I believe we're going to drive them out. That's right. That's right. Children, we miss so much in life because we're not willing to step out on faith. We want to know how it's going to come out. We want to see how we're going to come out. Like one man said, I've got faith. I just want to see how it's going to come out. <laughs> I believe I'm going to get over there. I just want to see, see see how we're going to do it. Having faith is not knowing how you're going to come out. Yes, sir. But faith know, is, is because you know why you're doing it. Yeah. And who you believe is on your side. That's it. That's it. So let's be mature Christians. Yes, Lord. Let's get off of the milk of just talking about faith. Come on. And get on the meat of doing something based on our faith. That's it. Come on. Come on. Something that we know. Is beyond our power yes, to do. Yes, Lord. But something we know that when our power is insufficient, well, it's just right to God. That's it. That's it. I know that God is able. And listen, just knowing that, not, not, not based on what you read, not based on oh, what you have. Yeah. Uh, 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 been told, but based on what you've seen and experienced with your own eyes, yeah, you yeah. know God is able. Yes, sir. What a comfort it is when you have to face challenges that you know are too strong for you. Yeah. Knowing you're in the will of God. See, David, when he stood before Goliath, he knew that he was no match for Goliath. He knew that Goliath was an experienced warrior. He knew that he had no chance of defeating Goliath with a slingshot and a rock. But he said, I'm coming at you in the name of the living God. And when I come, you just going to see me, but I'm not by myself. I got God with me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go lie in the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord. And then he did what he could. Yeah. He took that rock, the sling yeah. shot, and he hurled that rock. And when he did all he could, God took over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. God put his guidance system on that rock. Yeah. Guided it to the only place where it needed to go to defeat the lie. And then God put his booster on that rock. He gave it enough power to knock the lion down. When we do what we can, come on, bro. in the will of God, God will do the rest. And we'll be able to handle the giants no matter where they are or what they have going for them. That's the blessing of being a child of God. Yes, sir. Oh, what a blessing it is yes. to be in God's family. Hallelujah. What a blessing it is to be a child of God. Yes, it guarantees us a seat in the kingdom, but he's a very present help right now. Right now. In the time of trouble. If we are willing to step out on faith. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen.